Thanks. So, uh, welcome to my. I'm Manuel Mot. I'm a product manager at Synopsis. I'm going to talk about usage models and how how we see them at the, you know from from Synopsis perspective. Um, you know, I'll go quickly um, um, on 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 these initial topics. But the, the point is, you know. Multi-Rai is here, he's here to say it's, it's bridging this gap uh, between what we want to do, uh, you know, in terms of the industry, in terms of adding functionality, in terms of adding complexity into our systems uh, versus, you know, what the flattening of the Moore's law is enabling us to do. So the way out of that is through, through you know, chiplets and multi-Rai systems, and uh, we see them already, uh, you know, uh, being deployed in the, in the industry, you know, the creating very interesting and, uh, and transformative uh, products out there. And the next step really is, you know, how to democratize, let's say, the use of, 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 of multi-DI systems, user chiplets uh, across the industry. And the first uh, big stumbling stone was identifying a, a, a standard uh, or a, a die to die interface that could be uh, generally accepted and used it across the industry for that could support all use cases. We think UCIE is, the, is that, uh, that protocol, given its very compelling, you know, PPA uh, targets. Given, given its um, completeness and the uh, and the flexibility, uh, and really we see it, uh, you know, being adopted uh, across the industry, being becoming the de facto standard for uh, for um, for uh, you know die to die interfaces. And you know, one of the big reasons is its flexibility in terms of protocols, like uh, like was discussed earlier, in terms of uh, packages that it can support, in terms of the bandwidth that it can support. It gives you. The system designer the flexibility to use it and leverage it to any of, um, of the use cases that we see out there. And you know, it's we kind of divide the, the world of multi die into you know like four uh, types of use cases. Um, uh, you know, uh, I think you know, um, looking at the, from the from the top, um, the first one, and it's actually the one that where we see mo most adoption today is um, is uh, this, the principle of scaling, uh, scaling functionality, scaling uh, uh, performance through uh, homogeneous tie integration to get more performance for different types of use cases. This is uh, probably the, the the use case that we see more often today. Um, it's about flexibility. It's about managing, you know, a portfolio. Um, IO, IO and memory splitting, functional split, splitting is another uh, use case that we see very, very, very commonly being uh, used in the, in the industry, you know, big, uh, high speed of adoption there. And um, the idea here is to, of course, by moving out some, some functionality into, into other dies, you can then select the appropriate node for each of, uh, of the dies. You can also, again, manage your, your, your portfolio your, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a better way. Uh, um, so it's, it's again about flexibility, about uh, about cost, heterogeneous computing or or aggregation of dice. It's again another another use case that is interesting. It's it's something that uh, that we are uh, again seeing in 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 uh, in you know in many of the uh, engagements that 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 we see across the industry. It's the idea of of bringing in functionality into the die to save you know by bringing it additional functionality to the die you save power you you. you Give it more, uh, you know, uh, more functionality, more, uh, more performance. The example of heterogeneous compu computing is clear. Uh, you know, bring an accelerator uh, closer to the server. In the context of um, of storage, you could you could imagine this being, a, a, you know, like a, um, a, a offload accelerator that might be br brought together to with the with the the, the, the memory um, controller for, for a. You know, for applications where where uh, high performance is required, but it might not be there for other use cases, other applications where it where it, it, it is not needed. Again, you know, flexibility, um, uh, the ability to use uh, to 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 create different SKUs uh, and, uh, depending on the on the on the application that drives the a lot of this multi multi case multi multi die um, system adoption. Um, and you see, you can support all of those again different. To, you know, all, all of these use cases can leverage and, and take advantage of the, of the good characteristics of, of UCIE through the different options that it supports in terms, in terms of, again, package, uh, bandwidth so, uh, uh, options, uh, you know, protocol options, etc. I also have there uh, uh, this, this last use case, which is about uh, um, use of UCIE retimers to expand the, 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 the reach of UCIE outside of the package into the other, other chips or into the other other um, uh, you know, uh, racks, for example, this is this 
together with CPO can be used, for instance, in the context of uh, new uh, data center architectures, like uh, you know, for for resource uh, resource aggregation, resource pooling type of type of use cases. So again, UCI you know has solutions for all of these use cases. That's why it is so interesting. At Synopsis, we, we do see uh, you know a, a large cross section. Of, we do, uh, interact with a lot large cross section of the industry, and you know we talk with with many customers. So I wanted to give you a bit of a um, you know a few key points of what we're seeing uh, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of adoption of multi die systems, in terms of adoption of, of this multi die architecture. In terms of applications, um, it's clear that you know this. The, the drive applications were started in the data center in our perspective and it's clear that they are still the majority of the of the of the applications of the adoptions the, you know hpc servers big ai chips uh, uh, networking as well but um, what we're seeing is that multi die is going out of the data center we are, we are seeing increased adoption increased rates of adoption specifically in in the automotive domain but also in the consumer space in the industrial space even even in in, in storage we are seeing uh, a growing interest in, in in adopting this type of architectures to you know, to go beyond Murak and to, to to be more creative on on the solutions that they are implementing because uh, because you know the the, the most of the uh, of the applications are still most, you know strongly computer uh, computing uh, um, uh, dominated it's natural that the process nodes that 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 we see uh, as more relevant today are the advanced nodes three nanometer five nanometer but we do see uh, also um, an interest and a growing interest in, in you know uh, larger geometries, uh, seven nanometer, twelve, even potentially planar nodes. This is to support you know your IO dyes, your specialty dyes, lower cost type of application. So th this is this is also coming in packages. There's also some uh, interesting dynamics going on. Most of the package um, uh, you know uses that we're seeing are laminates, organic substrates. This is uh, you know related to the cost. The, low cost, the lower cost of, the, of those packages, availability from multiple sources, also you know the maturity of the technology. But you know if you if you really want the highest performance in terms of, in terms of, of, of density, etc., then you you know you need to use an interposer, you need to use advanced packages. But that comes at a at a cost, the cost financial cost, the cost in complexity, and that's not very attractive. That's why you know most 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 use cases that we are seeing go into uh, you know are, are typically looking into sub substrate type of packages. What's interesting is that we're seeing, you know, emergence of new packaging technologies. You know, this, this has been coming um, uh, recently with uh, technologies like RDL Funout, technologies like silicon bridge type of technologies, which kind of bridge the, the gap between the substrate and interposer. They give us high density, high performance packaging, um, close or approxi uh, approximating what interposer can, can deliver, but at a, a price point, at a cost point that is much lower. So we expect, um, uh, you know, maybe uh, approaching uh, the substrate side of things. So we do expect um, to see more adoption of this type of packages as a as a way to you know, to give higher higher density, higher performance to to, to, to solutions at a more more relevant price point. Um, the other interesting aspect that, that that we see talking to you know uh, in the industry, you know, uh, talking to our customers is that even if we are pursuing this open ecosystem, that's the goal that we are trying to achieve in, across the industry. This open chiplet ecosystem, open chiplet marketplace, where everybody talks to it, every chiplet talks to each other. Um, today, most of these cases are still captive, captive in the sense that one vendor owns both sides of the die, so is is it's not really um, you know. Interoperation with chiplets from other vendors is, is maybe not so relevant for him. What's relevant is um, is optimization, optimization of the of the you know optimization uh, related to, to his own uh, use case, to his own uh, application. And and UCI supports this. Supports this with streaming protocols. Streaming protocol gives you a way to use and, and leverage UCI uh, you know very very relevant characteristics. Uh, you know, using your own uh, uh, captive uh, protocol. Or, um, you know, as, as examples, and we see that this quite often, um, uh, you know, uh, multi die systems are used to, to, to connect to, to uh, compute dies, for example, with their own uh, 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 SOC fabric in each of them. For instance, if you have a, an AXA fabric on one side and an AXA fabric on, on the other side, you can use UCIE with a small uh, AXI bridge on top, which, you know, Synopsis, for example, uh, also supports. 
on top of, of, of streaming to have a very optimized solution for for uh, for this uh, connection between the two the two um, the two publics. The CXS bridge is another example. That's more for ARM based type of um, type of you know CNM uh, uh, mesh type of network. But the point I want to make is today, really most of the most of the uh, implementations that we are seeing are based on streaming, which uh, you know for this type of, type of captive systems, which is are supported by UCI. Um, but moving, you know, to the future, we are looking into, um, uh, you know, going into this uh, open uh, open uh, chiplet ecosystem, we, we, this open marketplace where everything is interoperable. Everything, you know, you can build your systems out of chiplets from from uh, any vendors. And this is, um, you know, there are there are many challenges uh, in, in, in crossing over from from captive systems to to, to these. But, but a lot of these, uh, these, these challenges are being addressed. You know, all of these challenges are being addressed right now. A lot of them are being addressed and resolved within the context of UCIE. And that's also, uh, that's also very, you know, very relevant in the, the you know, to, to, to choose uh, a very relevant reason why, why UCIE has been chosen as a, as, as a default, uh, de facto standard for, for cross industry as, as we see. You know, um, when you're in an open ecosystem, interoperability becomes becomes critical. So, uh, you know, UCIE gives you uh, that ability through, uh, you know, um, a, a standard die to die interface, through, uh, you know, um, um, the ability to, to, to prove interoperability, to prove compliance by supporting, uh, you know, um, uh, protocols like CXL, uh, CXL and PCIe that are widely adopted, that have already a strong ecosystem uh, available in, in, in the industry, so are they, they are quite mature and, and, uh, and you know, ready to uh, you know, facilitate uh, interoperability. In addition, ECIE uh, addresses challenges such as uh, you know, the implementation or definition of common form factors, the, you know, security for chiplets, all these, all these aspects are being addressed within the, the ECIE com community. There are other challenges, uh, you know, that we, some that we talked about, you know, the, the access to, to other types of uh, advanced packaging, business models. It, these are being addressed across the industry as well. And also, you know, uh, design and, and uh, implementation of multi die systems is a, is a challenge, is a barrier uh, as, as you go into, into, into a more open, uh, open uh, and expanded uh, ecosystem. And companies like, uh, you know, EDA companies like Synopsys can help with that by, by uh, and are helping with that by providing um, you know, uh, design flows and design and verification flows and the, and the, and the, and the methodologies that are that are specialized that are optimized for multi die systems and, and of course the, the, with the tools that um, that support those flows. Now, um, I want to, to so UCI supports all these all these processes, all these all these different use cases. Or the you know, it's 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 targeting uh, also this open ecosystem. I want to spend just a, a couple more minutes on, on a few examples of, of how you can, how we, you know, we can leverage UCIE and build upon UCIE to, to, to address specific challenges, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, for certain application. And one example is this one, the example of, of a high reliability uh, application. And, and, you know, the, the, the poster child example is is uh, you know level four autonomous driving so full full autonomy in in those cases you know you don't you, you cannot ex, uh, accept uh, you know um, system outage you cannot accept that the, the system fails and then uh, and then you do something about it that, that will be too late the accident will, will have will have happened so the idea is to um, to be able to uh, monitor the state, the health of each individual lane uh, uh, as it is working, and and uh, you know, and take decisions uh, in appropriate time before before the the uh, you know the, the outage happens, before the the fault uh, appears. UCI, with, especially with UCI 1.1, already gives us some um, uh, tools to to do this. It, it gives us uh, additional ways of reporting the status of each uh, you know the. Uh, that's the uh, special characteristics of, of, of the signal uh, on each lane, but uh, uh, it assumes it assumes that this this uh, this status has been acquired through during training initially. But we can go beyond that, and we can go beyond that, beyond that and have uh, these signal integrity monitors built into 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 the into an ECI five, for example, and th and in this way, in mission mode, we continuously monitoring the the. Um, the, the status and the, and the characteristics of the signal being received in mission mode without interrupting the in traffic traffic and have that, that information be, be processed by, a, by a, some analytics engine that, that might be embedded or cloud-based to determine if there are 
you know, if the, if there are degradation in the, in the in the in the characteristics or quality of the signal received on on each lane, and predict when a failure will happen, and in this way allow the system to take action before the failure the failure happens. The, 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 you know, the action can be simply do a, a, a repair using the the UCI test and repair functionality. It can be you know do a graceful uh, power down or uh, you know. Um, Tell the tell the driver in, in, the, in, the, in the automotive example that now he needs to to drive the car himself because the system is going to you know going through some trouble. It can be something like that. But it's the point is you can um, you know you avoid system models. You can react before the problem if the problem appears. And these, these are interesting solutions that are that can that, that are being deployed. The other example that I want to bring it's the last example. Yes, this is it's <laughs> it's about. Uh, Testing. So testing of multi ride systems can be um, can become very time consuming if you have, and that's a cost, of course. If you have um, um, if you have a multi ride system with many many dies, um, and, and so some of these dies or a lot of these dies will not have a high speed uh, access for for test. That becomes um, you know a, a slow process to bring all these test vectors in, across the across the, the all the dies and, and and you know be able to to execute the test. One way to, to, you know, to improve the situation, to accelerate testing, is to, in fact, make the only uh, high-speed interface that surely is there, which is the, the, the die to die interface, the UCI interface, um, make it part of the, test, of the test structure, make it part of the test path to, to, to enable you know, uh, acceleration of the, you know, of the loading of the, of the, of the test the vectors and, and acceleration of the whole test. Yeah. The idea would be, of course, Initially, the UCI, uh, the UCI link would be tested, and then once it's 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 up and running and it's valid, you can then use it within the the, the, the test framework to um, and the test fabric to to carry to carry all these all these um, uh, you know test vectors and results back and forth at high speed. In this way, accelerating the test and in this way reducing costs. And that's obviously something that is very attractive. Okay, and with that, I have um, I kind of conclude. I think uh, we looked a bit at, uh, at the different use cases, how we see the, the industry evolving, how UCA supports all of them, and also how we can build upon UCA to address specific challenges of uh, the industry.